we'll, we'll call this meeting to order at uh, three o'clock. Um, first up, public input and board communication. Does anybody have any communications? I do not. All right, okay. I made it on. I'm here. Okay. Oh, good. There you are. <laughs> um, finance director, do you want to give a sure. report? And I'll try to make you dizzy. <laughs> Hi, Carol. Hello, everybody. Hi, Cindy. Um, I believe that you all have my report that I sent out uh, for yes. the earlier meeting. Mm -hmm. And as we know, the March quarter was um, pretty good from the financial market standpoint. Um, we are looking at um, this was the January, February and March. We have April, May and June, which we will see what happens, I guess, in a few weeks with uh, the impact on the pension fund. But at the bottom, you'll see my reconciliation to SEI and the difference primarily between their numbers, which is in his report, is uh, revenue that we have reported that um, is a deposit in transit for their books and also some accounts payable that it has not reflected in their report. And that will get us from the town's number down to their number or their number to our number, I should say. So if there are any questions, I'll try to answer them. If not, no. Nope. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. you. Did a perfect job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, hopefully, everybody has the has a chance to read the uh, February tenth, two thousand twenty two minutes. Mm -hmm. And when you're ready, I'll entertain a motion. I move we accept the minutes. Okay. I'll, I'll second, second, Jason. <laughs> okay. First by Carol, and second by Jason. Um, all in favor of approving the February 10th, 2022 minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Uh, authorization of payments from retirement fund for retirement benefits. We have three people. By the way, I don't know if everybody knows I say. This is Cindy's last meeting with us. She's retiring. Um, just to mention, but if we don't approve the pension <laughs> next month, does that keep you here? I don't know. I think so. <laughs> wow. Good for you, Cindy. Thank you. She'll be very missed. Thank you. I tried everything to dissuade her. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> I mean, who would want to keep working in government as long as humanly I possible? <laughs> uh, I think 40 years is long enough. <laughs> okay. Um, I entertain a motion to approve the three uh, authorization of payments for the three items for the three people. So moved. This is Mark. I'll second. It's Jason. And the first and the second. Um, any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanim unanimously. Next up, SCI Investments. Uh, John, I have one question before we mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. Attached to the minutes were these retirement board meetings held with no quorum. Is right. that something we have to address or is that just for information? It is something. It's under uh, other business 7.2. Oh, okay. Yeah. We went back through and tried to find every time that happened. Okay. So. Okay, Pat, take it away. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, uh, Cindy, I enjoy your sense of humor. Uh, the, the first quarter was a, a good quarter. That was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can tell you that my gray hairline just creeped up about another half inch uh, as we went through the first uh, part of this year here. <laughs> so as I look at my 401k, and I'm sure you, as you look at the pension and your individual accounts, it has not been pretty. So we'll, we'll talk about some of that. So let's get right into it, just the capital markets as a whole. And again, this is through the third or the first quarter, just to keep in line with your financials. But I really want to kind of ramp it up and get you up to date with the last couple of months as well. I think that's very important because a lot has happened um, since the last time that we've met. Um, but you can see here on the right hand side, we start to see a tremendous amount of volatility that started in the first quarter. And that can be denoted by the, uh, the green bars. And they're all pretty much to the left with the exception of commodities. Um, and we'll talk about commodities in just a minute, but we saw a lot of volatility and a risk off atmosphere. People uh, were just selling out of equities, 
And unfortunately, what you see here is they are also selling out of fixed income. So it was one of those markets where diversification was very difficult. You lost on both sides of the equation and um, that created a lot of problems for pension plans around the globe. So um, again, very volatile first quarter. That volatility continued pretty significantly through April. We saw significant negative returns. And I'll end this slide on a good note. May started off absolutely horribly, um, but the last week of May, we recouped all of the losses from the first part of May. So May was slightly flat, maybe up a little bit, maybe down a little bit, depending on um, the type of allocations that you had. So we ended May on a good note. Let's hope that continues. Um, I'm not going to look at the market today because um, it's probably pretty volatile as I speak. So let's move ahead to U.S. equity markets, um, an interesting dynamic, which we've been talking about for quite some time, the last several meetings. Um, the bottom left-hand chart here, you can see on a year-to-date basis, uh, or the first quarter year-to-date for this, um, you can see value was relatively flat, and most of the re negative returns came from the growth sector. And that goes back to all those times we were talking about the mega cap tech stocks, um, how they were leading the markets higher, and really driving indexes higher as a whole. Just a handful of names were really um, doing that. So, but what we've seen is a dynamic change. So if you look at the US large cap sectors, in the past, technology and consumer discretionary were always kind of on the left-hand side of this chart. Now we're seeing energy, utilities, consumer staples. So we're seeing the commodity uh, picture here with energy, obviously, energy prices where they are, oil prices at all time highs. Um, utilities and consumer staples, financials, they're a little bit more value-oriented, a little bit more defensive in nature. They're kind of leading the way through the first quarter here. International equity markets. So last year, um, China with their zero COVID policy um, absolutely had a horrendous year. Their GDP growth uh, slowed significantly. Um, their returns were like way in bear market territory, negative 30% on some of their stock indexes. Um, this year, we've seen them kind of come back a little bit, but overall, um, the big winner is on the emerging market side, and that was Latin America. And for reasons you probably would understand is they are commodity producing nations, and they benefited from the spike in commodity prices. Um, pretty much everywhere else was flat. You know, Japan kind of hung in there relative to the US. But overall, I mean, the markets were down considerably. You can see the one-year numbers there for Asia. A lot of that was because of China, and they had significant returns. Now, I want to touch on China just for a minute longer because they're a big part of the inflation story that we have today. Um, so it's really threefold the way I like to look at it. Russia, um, Ukraine war, obviously, is definitely impacting uh, prices across the globe, um, supply, and everything else. But China's zero COVID policy um, really has devastated um, supply trade chains. And what I mean by that is Shanghai, a city of 25 million people, was shut down for over three, over three weeks, almost four weeks. Now, they're starting to rebound finally there. Um, COVID's starting to dissipate somewhat. Um, so that's good news finally. But it takes a while to get those supply chains going. And the question is, you know, once they open their ports and start moving things again, are the receiving ports gonna be ready for it? Because if you remember with the supply chain disruptions we had back during COVID on the West Coast in the US, there was like 20 mile lines of uh, cargo ships coming in and they were just stuck. They just weren't unloading this stuff quick enough. And that, that was part of the inflationary story as well. So we may see that again, unfortunately. Um, so we're not out of the woods yet, but um, there are really the three main dynamics of why um, we're seeing these big um, inflationary numbers that we're seeing today. Hey, hey, Patrick, just a, a quick add on to that. Uh, 100% agree. The, the other issue is, is that of demand. You know, coming out of the, the pandemic, there was this pent up demand, you know, a lot, lot of savings that have, you know, just kind of gone waiting, you know, to spend. And, and so right now we're, we get uh, an issue where, you know, we've got a supply issue, but we also have a demand issue. And the Fed's really got a balancing act, you know, to try and bring down demand without inciting a, a recession. And, and that's what the market's kind of reacting to. You know, can they, can they bring about a soft landing or will this thing come crashing down at, at some point if, if rates get too high? So 
really a lot of volatility that's a, a function of not only it's it's like he said like like uh, patrick said early you know normally you when the equity markets go down you've got the fixed income markets to kind of balance that off we didn't have either of that and on the inflation side we've got both a supply and demand issue and 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 it's a real challenge where we are right now sorry patrick <laughs> no okay that's a good point that was actually the third one which i didn't mention and you just did i totally forgot um but another point to make there is I think we're seeing a little bit of a shift in dynamics. So the first part of the year kind of really stagflation fears. So slowing economy as well as inflation. Um, but what we've seen over the last three or four, three weeks is um, a little bit, when I say flight to safety, I mean, people started buying treasuries again. Now that didn't last too long. The last couple of days, treasuries have gone back up. But there was a dynamic that changed in a shift where people were actually buying treasuries because, quite frankly, you know, three percent on you know on the ten year was pretty attractive at that point in time relative to where we've been over the last twelve years. So we did start to see that shift. Um, the question is, is this going to be a V-shaped recovery, right? So maybe we're in the V right now, going up, um, or is it going to be more of a W-shaped recovery where we're going to have that second phase, which is recessionary fears, which drive the market lower after we just had that brief spike and then possibly up after that. So um, it's, it's, it's a really interesting dynamic and Ken's absolutely right. It's a very, um, it's a tightrope um, act and it's very difficult for the Fed um, and how, on how to move forward. And fixed income has become one of the most interesting conversations because a lot is happening here where it was just range bound for many, many years um, what we've, we're seeing here is um, the Fed has raised rates twice. They did a 25 basis point rate hike and a 50 basis point rate hike. And you could see that impact at the short end of the yield curve. So looking back to 331, 2021, we had a pretty healthy yield curve. Um, but then moving to where we are today, you could see the short end came all the way up and the rest of the yield curve remained relatively flat. Also, what we see here is an inversion again. And um, what that typically means is if there's an inversion between the two, um, the two year and 10 year, um, or even the two month and 10 year, but two, two year and 10 year, nine times out of 10, you end up in some sort of, re, uh, some sort of recession 18 months on average after that happens. So um, again, we could come in for a soft landing if the Fed plays their cards right but there is a stronger likelihood we could see a recession um, in the near term in the next 12 months or so. So we do expect on average, we ex the market is expecting eight rate hikes this year now. Um, now that's really data dependent because if they start to see us move into recessionary territory and extreme economic slowdown, they probably won't do that many this year. Um, so that leaves at least five more rate hikes of 25 basis points each for the remainder of the year. So that's pretty considerable. And um, that's why Ken and myself, when we're looking through your asset allocation, we're looking to diversify that out a little bit. When we get into the August meeting, we can have some discussions around some of that. Questions around fixed income? Okay, now the fun stuff. So... Um, and again, this is through March. April was a lot worse, okay? April was basically the first three months all by itself. So um, year to date through the end of March, you're now 5.66 net of fees. That's slightly underperformed the index. Um, again, a lot of your strategies are indexing. Um, so slightly underperformed the index. And then I brought the numbers to more recent because I think it's a tough number to swallow, but I ran in numbers through yesterday and the plan's down um, somewhere between 11 and 11 and a half percent on a year-to-date mm -hmm. basis. And all, all of that was April, because May was relatively flat. So it's pretty significant. It's a tough pill to swallow, um, you know, but we do believe that we probably will see, you know, some sort of um, stronger returns towards the second half of the year. Um, it just might be, you know, another quarter before we start to see some stabilization um, in the marketplace. The good news is, you've been in a very good place in the past, right? So 
you've been indexing large cat, small cat. That was the strategy for the last 10 years. It's done very well. You've been there the entire time, okay? But now we're starting to see a change, a shift in the dynamics in the markets where there's not just a focus on, you know, purchasing a bunch of companies and index. There's a focus on corporate earnings, which is becoming much more prevalent because there's no more Fed stimulus. There's no more monetary stimulus right now. Um, so the focus is on corporate earnings. So, you know, there are some strategies, once again, we'll talk about in August, um, which we think might help, you know, through these volatile times to help diversify the portfolio a little bit more. The, the, the real good news is had we had this meeting a week ago, Monday, those losses would have looked a lot worse than they actually look right now. So um, it, we're, we're in that crazy time where every day, you know, the market's just, just gyrating, you know, one or 2%, you know, either way. So um, the good news is we bounce back a little bit, but it's still, it's still pretty hard to take uh, year to date. Yeah. That actually happened in one week that bounce back. Yeah. Yep. It was incredible because it basically brought, brought us flat for the year and actually positive in some areas. Yep. Just a hey guys, this is a, uh, sorry to interrupt. This is Jason. I just had a quick question. Does, uh, do you put rebalancing on pause or anything during these crazy fluctuations or is there still uh, rebalancing that goes on in the portfolio? So we've extended our rebalancing. Um, now, if there's extreme market conditions, conditions like we had in the credit crisis, where you know we saw bonds trading like twenty cents on the dollar, that's we paused um, rebalancing back then because of that dynamic. Um, but this is a healthy sell-off we're seeing right now. I know it doesn't feel healthy, but we've had a thirteen-year bull market. Uh, we have quarterly rebalancing right now, and it's only if the funds are outside of two percent variance in between funds. So let's say, for instance, your Vanguard S and P five hundred small cap index fund. Um, is under its target by more than 2%, that's when we'll rebalance. So you know, we're not going to rebalance if that's 1%. We're not going to go back to target. We're going to rebalance when the funds themselves are outside that 2% variance. Jason, because both equity markets and fixed income markets really went in the same direction, re rebalancing is, is less of an of a of a need as opposed to if, if like fixed income went up and, and, and equities went down, then you really get way out of whack. But, but I am sure that SEI is taking a look at those numbers um, more frequently than, than just, uh, you know, every, every uh, 90 days. So. Yep. Any other questions? You know what? I do have a quick question. When when this is all these hits come, does this affect the fees that we have to pay you? Do do our fees go up when the uh, when the outlook is not so good? No, they actually follow the market, right? So the better you do, the better we do. When oh, your values like, go down, we just, get less. Just like Fisher Investments, the one you I hear, that, <laughs> I hear that commercial on every station every day, a hundred times a day. <laughs> That's like Fisher Investments. <laughs> that, that, that's the same thing with us, Carol. So we're, we're, <laughs> we're tied into the asset values. So when they go up, we do a little better. When they go down, um, yeah. you know, we, we get hit a little bit as well. Thank you. That's so funny. I was waiting for someone in our area to ask that question because of that commercial Fisher investment. <laughs> <laughs> you were the first to do it. So I'm, I'm gonna have to oh, send you an SEI hat. <laughs> Any other questions? I mean, you can look at the fund returns. Um, they're all down significantly. I mean, the, the big winner, I, I would say, on a year-to-date basis, and none of them are winners, are high-yield bonds and, um, and the real estate fund. That's all I had. Great. Thank you. Move on to a SageViews update. OK. Patrick, can you, there we go. So let's see, let's share our screen. 
Okay. Um, so, so you know, Patrick said uh, he he wasn't looking at the uh, the markets. Well, I I, I can't do that. So, <laughs> um, you know, and, and today is just a, a, a microcosm of of the markets. It opened up big in the morning. And then there was some news that came out that was actually positive uh, economic news, which in this contrarian mode that we're in right now, bad is good, good is bad. So uh, the markets reacted negatively with the thought that, you know, the stronger the economy, the more likelihood that the Fed will continue and, and expand, you know, interest rate hikes. Uh, so the market kind of came down uh, a good deal over the course of the midday. And now, it looks like it's rebounding and, you know, may, maybe end up in positive territory. Uh, also, the markets is sort of like a, an NBA basketball game. No, nothing happens to the last two minutes. So you can you can kind of look at the markets from 3.30 to 4 o'clock and that'll give you, a, you know, the best indication of where where things are going. So, um, you know, not, 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 a, not a lot of fun, but, um, you know, that's that's where we are right now. I think we went over this chart last quarter, but I think it's it's good to kind of relook at it again. This is um, the the equity as measured by the S and P 500, looking back over the last 42 years. Um, the the solid bar chart represents where the markets finished for the year, up or down, and then the gray dots represent the intra year decline of of that particular market, the S and P 500 during the year. If you kind of read, you know, the the, the top, um, you know, the second paragraph, you know, the average intra-year decline is is about 14%. So every year on average, the market at some point in time, the S&P 500 goes down um, on average 14%. Obviously, there's, there's, you know, a little bit better than that, and, and in some cases, a little bit worse than that. And yet, despite that, that in 32 of the 42 years, the, the S&P 500 actually ended up to be positive. Um, so what you take out of that is that volatility is, is a normal course of what happens in the course of, of a given year. Uh, and yet the longer term, the, the markets tend to be positive far greater, far, far more frequently than, than they are negative. Uh, and as you can see that, you know, in some of these years, you know, you're down, you know, significant numbers. Uh, in context, a beer, a, a, a correction market is considered when the market is somewhere between negative 10% and negative 20%. If it goes over 20% negative, it's considered to be a bear market. And, and the S&P 500 kind of come up to that 20% number, hasn't crossed it yet this year. So we're, we're sort of in that correction territory uh, as opposed to the bear market territory. Uh, wh where it goes from here, anybody's guess, you know, in terms of where it finishes, but this is sort of looking at it from a longer term perspective. And the fact that that volatility is is a part of that, and as Patrick correctly noted, the challenge this year is that when the markets and the equity markets are correcting, you don't have you didn't have that fixed income, you know, to to fall back on. And in fact, in the first quarter, the fixed income returns were actually more negative than than the equity returns. Fortunately, that sort of corrected itself in the second quarter. And while the fixed income numbers have been somewhat down they're, they're they're much less down than 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 the than the equity numbers so um you know ultimately you know we'll 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 end up seeing where where that goes um again the same chart as, as as Patrick showed i think what what's interesting here is you know when we look at where the you know the 2 year and, the, and then the 10 year and the 30 year numbers they they actually spiked uh in the course of the second quarter so that 2.4% that we see in the 30 year actually went over 3% um, and this has since come down a little bit, which actually you know, helps the fixed income returns as in interest rates come down, um, you know, the returns on, 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 on your holdings actually go up. But we're, we're seeing some volatility here. Um, we, we've seen a little less of the inversion that Patrick was talking about, kind of more normalized with the thought being, the hope being that maybe the the the, the market believes that the, the, the inflation challenges that the Fed, you know, is reacting to is 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 somewhat positive. The Fed's actually doing a fairly good job, but that can change on a dime, you know, based on where um, ultimately, you know, people, you know, see the markets end up going to. Um, 
So let's see, I just want to real quickly take a look at um, the, the lineup. Is, and again, same thing that Patrick showed. And this is a little bit of a spoiler for, for our August meeting. You can see, you know, we've, we've got a number of funds. So we have a, a, a fair, fairly good level of diversification. But Patrick and I have been meeting, you know, kind of frequently over the last, you know, few months talking about, you know, what enhancements can be done uh, not only to the asset allocation, you know, uh, overall equity fixed income allocation, a uh, little bit of a tweak there, but also, you know, can we change the fund lineup to add uh, more diversification, both on the equity side and the fixed income side? So those are the the kinds of things that we want to bring to you um, for the next meeting and, and talk about what enhancements can bring both you know, long-term strategically, but also the ability to do more tactical changes as the markets warrant. So a um, little, little bit of a spoiler in terms of of, of where that goes. Um, and we think, you know, ultimately that that it, it will help both, you know, from a diversification standpoint and a strategic allocation standpoint as well. Um, if we go to Look at the fund performance, looking at all of the funds. Again, that far right-hand column is, is how we evaluate whether the fund has passed the investment criteria that's listed in the investment policy statement. Anything in green would, would indicate a passing score. And as, as we have noted in the past, all the funds you know, are passing, um, you know, many in the in the top decile, which is obviously a very good thing. And when we look at the average score for all of the funds, the average score is a 10. The lower the number, the better. So what this tells you is that the average score for the plan itself, you know, is in the top decile, you know, as, as we as we look and compare, you know, to to everything else. Um, so, I, you know, that that's really all I had. Uh, again, as, as, as we noted, the, you know, the kind of in the first quarter, the markets were down. You know, if you look at, at at plans in general, defined benefit plans, public defined benefit plans in general, you're looking at somewhere between a five and six percent decline in in the average defined benefit, which is pretty much where you guys are in. Uh, probably has brought down um, the funding status a little bit. You know, we we had really escalated that. It's probably back a little bit, maybe four or five percent. Um, but again, we're you know that that can change in a dime in a heartbeat with the you know with the the volatility of the market. So this is kind of one to kind of hold on. <laughs> you know, it's it's not infrequent. You know, um, and you know we're in one of those those uh, those trying times. But longer term, you know, historically we we've come out of this thing much stronger. The question ultimately is what's the duration of, of, of that volatility? How long will it last before we, we kind of write the, strip, this, the ship and, and get this back on, uh, on the right track? Questions? Okay. All right, Jack, that's, that's all I had. Okay, thank you very much, appreciate it. Okay. Moving on to the interest rate on employee contributions. Almost at the end. Yeah, right towards the end. Um. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> See the memo on uh, page 114 of the original packet. Um, let's see. Where it's setting the uh, long and short of it, setting the uh, uh, through the board per the board's policy, a rate of 1.20% to apply to the employee contributions held as of June 30th, 21. Um, it says information item only, but I do see in the past we actually voted to accept, voted for it. So entertain yeah. a motion. Vote to, yeah, they vote to accept it and file it. Vote to accept it and file it. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. For retirement board with no quorum. So thanks. I think Mark, you pointed it out last last time. So 
thanks for that. So we get those all fixed. So what we're looking for is one motion to uh, to make the, to sort of so, like we so, do for yeah to approve the whole lot. So John, first of all, thank you for following up on this. I mean, this was an item that I raised when I was town manager and was told repeatedly by the town clerk that three is a quorum of six. That never made any sense to me. So thank you for um, following up. And, you know, the, I do have a, the other question I have is, were there any other actions that were taken at these meetings that need to be redone, like the interest rate um, um, the item that we just did, or right hiring anybody? Yeah, she went through as much as she could. Uh, Lori Watros went through all of the old ones to check to make sure everything was, I guess we just hit it right. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, if, if the minutes could show, I mean, just so we have a record that, you know, it, it wasn't just folks looking to retire uh, mm -hmm. and the minutes, um, we, we picked up everything. Um, mm -hmm. and, yep. uh, yeah, I see like an 8, 13, 15, like motion to approve interest rate at 2.18. So I see some different stuff like that in there. The reduction in November. Yeah, 15, it just, yeah. it doesn't stick out as much as the other stuff. Okay, yeah, I see that. Thank you. I believe she went and looked at the minutes of any that only had three members. Right. She looked through, yeah, mm -hmm. if you heard that, she looked through anything with three members present. Okay. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? So move. This is Mark. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second it, Jason. Thank you. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, do we have anything for other business? If not, I'll entertain a motion to uh, adjourn and we will have the next meeting on August 11th. I move we adjourn. Uh, we Thank you, Mark. <laughs> yeah, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Have Congratulations, Cindy. Yes, Thank congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Cindy. Oh, right. Cindy, I hope you have a fun party. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sure I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks, everyone. Thanks Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.